Hello everybody, and today we'll be taking a look at some synthetic and gaming benchmarks on a mobile graphics chip, the 940MX. This card was produced by NVIDIA as a mid-range graphics acceleration solution for laptops and not intended for demanding tasks such as modern gaming. However, for the price and considering that it's a mobile device, the graphics card actually has a good amount of processing power. Specifically, my 940MX supports DirectX 12 and was built off the Maxwell architecture with the 28 nanometer process but only has a TDP of 23 watts. In addition, it has 24 texture mapping units, 8 render output units, and 512 cores with a base core clock of 795 MHz that can boost up to 861 MHz. In terms of VRAM, the 940MX also comes with 2GB of dedicated GDDR5 VRAM clocked at 1253 MHz but only has a 64-bit bus width. Released in January of 2016 in a variety of systems, I originally purchased a laptop with this graphics chip for $450. I already had a desktop computer, but at times, mobility became an issue and I needed a decently powered computer that could do some basic workstation and gaming tasks. So, the laptop I bought was the Acer Aspire E5 57 5G 55KK. This laptop shipped with an i5 7200U, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, a 1TB hard drive, and, of course, the 940MX mobile graphics chip. But trust me, these specs look better at a quick glance than they actually perform. In my experience, the 7200U is actually a pretty crap processor and doesn't hold up very well while running multiple programs. However, in low-end gaming applications, it's not actually that bad. What was bad, and by bad I mean horrendous, was the 1TB hard drive in the system. Turns out that it was running a 5400 RPMs and this caused boot times on my laptop to be up to 4 minutes long. So, after a few months of owning the system, I upgraded to a 500GB Samsung 860 EVO SSD and never looked back. Also, another quick little side note, but this video took a lot of work to make, so if you could hit that little red subscribe button below, that would just make my day. Aye, thanks. The first test I conducted on this laptop was of user benchmark. This software compares the performance of your system's components against identical components to see how yours stack up and gives it a percentile rating. This test actually went pretty well for my system and every major component of my computer, aside from the SSD, scored above the 50th percentile. My i5-7200U was placed in the 88th percentile, my SSD in the 40th percentile, my 8GB stick of RAM in the 85th percentile, and my 940MX in the 75th percentile. But don't let the numbers fool you. Just because my GPU was at 75% doesn't mean that it performs excellently, but actually is only about as good as an AMD HD 6850. Basically, all this means is that my laptop is performing pretty well and the benchmarks today were conducted on a healthy system. However, the first game I tested on this graphics card was PUBG or PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. This game is known for being very intensive and causing weaker and older hardware to struggle quite a bit, so I didn't have high hopes for gaming with this title. For this test, the resolution was set to 720p and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds was run in all the lowest settings. After a few minutes of testing, the average frame rate was a decent 41 FPS and was surprisingly stable with little to no stutter. Next up, I tested 2012's title of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Similar to the previous test, I ran this game with all the lowest settings except this time in 1080p. During the benchmark, both the GPU and the CPU saw high utilization utilization, but generally speaking, the GPU maintained a higher overall percentage. After playing a bit of deathmatch on Dust 2 for a few minutes, the average frame rate was a solid 63 FPS and performed pretty well. Gameplay was basically flawless and this computer could definitely deliver a solid competitive experience. Next up, I ran Grand Theft Auto 5 with all the normal settings selected in the 1080p resolution. The average frame rate in this opening mission was 50 FPS and gameplay was smooth and enjoyable, aside from a bit of screen tearing. There were some instances of brief stuttering or freezing, but these were very short and didn't affect gameplay much. For this test, this CPU and GPU both saw high utilization while running this game, so there was no outstanding battle net. Overall, GTA 5 ran well on this system, but lowering the resolution could bring us closer to the ideal frame rate of 60 FPS. After GTA 5, I then ran some Valorant on the computer, as this game has a pretty good reputation of running well even on lower end hardware. In 1080p, with all the highest settings and VSync applied, the average frame rate was 41 FPS and was completely stutter free. In this test, the GPU mostly saw higher usage than the CPU, so lower graphical settings would most definitely result in a higher frame rate. But even in its current state, the game ran well. I then played a new title for the JNight YouTube channel in BeamNG Drive. For this test, I toggled on all the lowest settings including simplified collision physics and drove around the grid map a little bit. After a few minutes of messing around, the average frame rate was 81 FPS and, at its worst, rarely dipped below the mid-70s. However, with bigger vehicles or larger maps, a decrease in frame rate should definitely be expected. Following that, I went against my best judgment and decided to run the game rest. Knowing this title is very intensive, I turned the settings down to as low as possible with a resolution of 1280 by 720 and loaded them to a server with a population of almost 100. I was honestly very surprised at the game's good optimization and that it was plenty playable. 
Granted, the game looked terrible, but the average frame rate was a solid 56 FPS. In terms of hardware utilization, the CPU hung about in the 80s while the GPU fluctuated around in the 90s. But the frame rate and gameplay was consistently smooth, and if you don't mind the terrible graphics, one would probably deem this game playable. After that, I tested Minecraft version 1.16.1, where I set all the settings to the lowest and adjusted the render distance to 7 chunks. During gameplay, I tested the performance in a few different areas, but the average FPS turned out to be a solid 80. Sometimes, the frame rate would temporarily dip down a bit while loading in new chunks, but generally speaking, the in-game performance was none too shabby. I then tested Rocket League where I was finally able to turn the settings up to their highest quality and simultaneously enjoyed a smooth gaming experience in 1080p. As expected, the game looked and ran well and after a few minutes of testing, the average frame rate came to be 47 FPS and ran great. While running the benchmark, I noticed that the usage of the 940NX was consistently at nearly 100% while the CPU was only around 50%. Due to this, a decrease in resolution and or graphical settings would most definitely significantly increase the average frame rate. Afterwards, I decided to take our test back in time a bit and test the 2009's title of Left 4 Dead 2. By default, the game set itself to a mixture of medium and high settings in 1080p, and given the game's old age, I opted to leave the settings as such. By the end of testing, the average frame rate was 60 FPS and gameplay was essentially flawless. So, given the results of this test, higher graphical settings would most likely run just fine on this system. I then took a look at another Valve title, Portal 2, which released back in 2011. This game was ran with all the highest settings applied, including triple buffered VSync in 1080p and achieved a solid average frame rate of 59 FPS. But this was to be expected since Portal 2 is quite an older game and has much lower system requirements than what was available. One of the last titles that I tested on this system was a smaller and lesser known game, Refunds. For this test, I wanted to maintain some decent aesthetics but also wanted a pretty solid frame rate so I put everything on medium and toggled the resolution to 1080p. With these settings, the average frame rate came to be 50 FPS, all while running and looking great. One could probably get away with running some higher graphical options with this GPU, but it was the bottleneck of this benchmark so any increase would probably yield a substantial decrease in frame rates. The last title I tested on this system was Insurgency. I ran this hyper-realistic shooter game from 2014 with all the lowest settings selected in 1080p and loaded into an empty server. After a few minutes of running around and emptying my magazine into random things, the frame rate pleasantly surprised me with a smooth average of 90 FPS. Due to this, higher settings would definitely be playable on the 940MX, but honestly, the game didn't even look that bad on the lowest settings. Regardless, the game ran well and thus concludes the benchmark to the 940MX graphics chip. So that's just how well the 940MX will hold up in 2020. But I got to thinking, what other CPUs was the 940MX paired with? After a little bit of research, I discovered that my laptop variant was one of the lower end models that had the 940MX graphics card and that some did have better CPUs such as the i7-8550U. Although this graphics card was featured in laptops with better components, it still allowed mine to be capable of providing a decent gaming experience. And honestly, for a $450 laptop from 2016, the system held up to and even surpassed my expectations. I also looked into the upgradability of the system and learned that the RAM could be increased up to 20 gigabytes, and I could possibly swap the SSD for a quicker Mark II SSD via usage of an adapter. I won't be doing this though, as sometimes the i5-7200U becomes a significant bottleneck of the system while running multiple programs simultaneously. But for a performance increase, one could overclock the 940MX, but overclocking the CPU would be more effective for increasing performance and reducing bottlenecks in general system usage. I wouldn't recommend this though, as after all, it is a mid-range laptop and therefore doesn't have a beefy CPU cooler more appropriate for overclocking. From my experience, when this laptop laptop is running intensive tests, even at stock speeds, the place where hot air is vented through can become very hot, sometimes even painful to the touch. So watch where you place your hands. But in sum, it's not actually that bad of a system and holds up decently in modern gaming. If you're considering buying this system or a near identical one, don't expect great frame rates but the games will be playable, albeit on the lowest settings. Oh, and also, a few of the more long-term subscribers, though there are probably only like 5 of you, might have noticed that I already made this video a while back. However, I made it private because I benchmarked it like an absolute fool, so you just watched version 2. I hope you enjoyed. And one last thing before you go, do you want exclusive videos and unreleased footage with a behind the scenes look into the channel? Well, then join the Discord, link in description. Regardless, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with the viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and I guarantee that I will respond to your comments. While you're at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production and also positive Positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye.